Hi guys, Dan here, and in today's video I'm going to be going over and telling you how to get rid of lag in video games. Now as complex as this might sound, I'll split this up into three easy to understand sections. So today I'm going to be covering three types of lag, these being control lag, ping lag and also stutter lag. Now in the background you are watching myself playing Battlefield 4 multiplayer, and to be honest I think this ties in quite nicely with the topic we're talking about today, which is lag. Pretty simple. Now onto the topic of today, lag. Now it's by far something that has probably annoyed every single one of you and it's probably got you killed in an online game, well, whether it be Battlefield or Titanfall or DayZ. And to be honest, despite what game you're playing, these games, um, these tips you sh sorry, should help you out. Now first of all, there's control lag. Now this lag is typically produced by your controls and you'll generally notice if you have control lag when you press an action like jump or fire and it doesn't happen right away on screen. Now one thing to do is to upgrade your existing hardware or to make sure that you have the right drivers installed for the devices that you currently own. Now if this doesn't kind of solve your problem, try disabling mouse smoothing or mouse acceleration for your mouse. And in such games, such as Battlefield 4, you'll typically find this under the setting which is called raw mouse input. And what you want it to do is just enable this. Now this makes sure mouse acceleration does not play a factor in making your system laggy whatsoever. Now finally, the last thing you can do to stop control lag is to turn off V-Sync, or also known as vertical sync. Now as good as this is, because of the way V-Sync works, having the setting on will either cap your frame rate at 30, 50 or 60 Hz and will make your inputs slightly delayed. So if you want higher frame rates than 60 and typically want your actions to be you know, completed in the game instantly, disabling V-Sync or turning down the setting from triple buffered to double buffered may help you out. Next up is ping lag. This type of lag is caused by your network equipment and the incoming internet connection to your house. The ping is probably more important than, a, than the raw speed of your connection when playing games and the ping is essentially the speed in which a computer can send some data to a server or another PC and actually get a response. Now the lower this is in milliseconds or MS for short is typically better. Now if you have the newer kind of fiber optics like I do myself you'll probably not have a problem with this because typically the ping you have on fiber is incredibly small. Now if you don't have you know fast fiber optics um, and you're on the older kind of copper internet the ways to improve your ping are well quite simply it's to just wire up your PC to your router and this is just the fastest way for data to be sent to your router and then to be sent to wherever it wants to go. From my own personal experience, uh, wireless can actually half your speed and increase your pings to be honest by about 3 times. Now this is bad when you're trying to play a game and it can usually get you killed. Now you can usually check what ping you is by, by you know, going onto the scoreboard. And as you can see with this example on Battlefield 4, holding the tab does show you, show you your ping and as you can see my ping there is highlighted uh, just to the right hand side of my kills and deaths. Finally we get onto stutter lag. Now this is the most common reason some gamers get annoyed with lag and in most cases means you will need to upgrade your existing hardware inside your PC, whether this be your GPU or your CPU. Now the first thing you can look into is, in terms of you know decreasing or eliminating stutter lag is to lower your game settings. So these are the visual settings. As stutter lag is due to the frames per second dipping or suddenly kind of dropping, and yeah, whether this been an explosion, if you've just seen on a tank for example, or if you've actually just blew a hole in a wall of a tank, frame rates can reduce and make a game kind of unplayable for a few seconds or even a second. Now frame rate drops can usually get you killed um, and lowering your settings from rather ultra to high or medium can save your life. Now another thing you can do is to turn off advanced settings like anti-aliasing or anisotropic filtering and also to kind of disable or lower the shadow quality. Shadows do suck up quite a lot of GPU uh, juice, so lowering these settings can give you higher frame rates. Now in modern gaming systems, and as a kind of minimum, you should at least have a fast hard drive. Or if you, if you actually think your hard drive's slow, buy another one and sticky games on that. That will allow you to get faster loading times. And if you've got the money to buy an SSD, definitely buy an SSD for your OS and put your games on a hard drive. That by far is the most common thing that people are doing these days. And since the price of hard drives is so, so low, um, getting actual hard drive just for games will help you load your games in. Now, as for the RAM, I really do recommend 8 
And to be honest, eight's kind of the maximum as well. So if, if you're building a new system or have an existing system that doesn't have um, eight gigs of RAM, I would recommend upgrading to eight gigs. Games usually don't use more than four, so I, I will say to get eight gigs of RAM, and from my personal experience, looking at the task manager when playing a game, it's always been about four to five gigs. So eight gig is definitely the sweet spot if you're running a game and your OS in the background. And typically RAM will, you know, won't exactly um, give you more FPS in games, but it, but it will kind of almost always result in smoother gameplay. And since uh, more data can be held in, in the RAM, um, you will get smoother gameplay for sure. Now in terms of the actual RAM on your GPU, I would make sure that, that you have 2 gigs of video RAM. As games like Titanfall and DayZ require kind of larger textures, um, this RAM on GPU will really, really help. Now, as games are playing, textures are stored on, a, on the actual RAM on the GPU. And this will typically be about 1 or 2 gig. And, you know, if it runs out of that RAM, you should, see, you should actually see sudden frame rate drops. As what the GPU is doing is actually clearing the RAM buffer and writing new data to it. So if you have 2 or 3 gigs of video RAM, this won't happen at all and you should have a smooth kind of frame rate all of the time. Now, I will say this can be a pain if the actual, um, you know, game just kind of lag down in the middle of a gunfight, but now you kind of know. 2 gigs of video RAM is kind of the sweet spot at the moment and is kind of what games are optimised to run with at the moment. If you've got 3 or 4 gig, fine, that's absolutely fine. Now, so that's going to be my guide on how to stop lagging games. And fair enough, that last section on to lag might have been a bit of a mouthful, but there's a lot to cover. And as for decreasing or eliminating uh, lag altogether, I really do hope this video has helped and like, it, you know, you've kind of found it useful and learned something from it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And as always, feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.